Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And this is part four of our T3485 by Tamiya in 135th scale. And what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be working on the turret. And we got some handrails to make up and install. Uh, we're going to make those out of wire. A uh, little bit of uh, texturing. We'll get some of that done. Uh, fix our main armament, the, the cannon barrel. And... Uh, we're going to do tow cables as well. So uh, let's uh, just go ahead and get to it. So a quick look here at our instructions. Now we are on step four. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to assemble our gun tube here. And uh, we're not going to put the turret together yet. Because we still have to do some work on the inside of the turret uh, to get it ready for assembly. Now, as you can see here, our gun tube is three pieces. So we have our muzzle end right there, and then we have the uh, two pieces for our uh, actual gun tube. And this, <laughs> this is the reason why a lot of people like to go ahead and buy a metal gun tube so they don't have to mess with this. But since we haven't done that, uh, what we need to do is line it up. And I'm gonna start at the muzzle end because I need that to be a nice straight uh, area there uh, for our um, uh, the muzzle end of the barrel to, to actually glue to. So I'm using this uh, clothespin here, this wooden clothespin, and I just put it over top of the seam where the two were joined, and that'll help align the pieces, and then we'll also clamp the pieces together. And we're just doing just the end of it for now. As you can see here, we're, we're all ready to go. A little bit of to me extra thin and that will wick down uh, that seam so we need to take our time when it comes to gluing up our our gun tube here uh, as you can see here the the parts are slightly bowed away from one another so we're going to want to make sure that uh, we keep them nice and even that way that way once the gun tube is uh, glued up uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't have a curve to it because what, what good is a uh, a main gun tube that shoots around corners you know we we, we actually need it to to shoot straight for us and uh, again we're just going to line up the seams here as you can see and uh, we will place two uh, close pins on it just to make sure that everything is aligned correctly so take your time when you're doing this because you really want those seams to be as spot on as possible and so we're tacking this into place with a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin. And once that has set up for us, and it doesn't take very long, we can check and make sure that we are straight. Now you can see I left those sprue gates on it. Uh, it's just easier to, for me anyway to take and get rid of those uh, after we've already glued up the barrel. That way we don't have any <laughs> cutting little divots out of the seam. And now we can just concentrate here on the center. Same thing. Uh, just making sure that we're all lined up and we'll just run the to me extra thin down that seam and we'll set this aside and let it glue or let it dry I should say <laughs> next up um, we have our muzzle end so there's a large hole and a smaller hole now the small hole is going to go uh, onto that little uh, locator pin just like that on the end of the barrel and again, we're going to just uh, apply our glue here, and we'll take and put the part into place, and we're just going to give it a little twist there. That'll kind of cause the uh, uh, the polystyrene to uh, give us a little uh, a little bit of that plastic welding. <laughs> uh, and it's really important that uh, we make sure that. <laughs> this part is straight and flush with the rest of the gun tube because it's all supposed to be one piece and and once we get this sanded down uh, and painted uh, you shouldn't see any of these seams so now with our barrel assembled we can go ahead and uh, take care of these sprue gates that are on there um, I'm just going to trim these off with our flush cut uh, sprue cutters and once we have that done, uh, we can just trim down those little corners that are there. Just don't overdo it because uh, <laughs> we don't want to have to come back and, and fill that. 
uh, it's just better to go ahead and sand it off. So I'm, I'm just using one of these flexible uh, sanding sticks here. Uh, it, it allows me to uh, actually conform a little bit, you know, kind of bend around that round part a little bit uh, without uh, having to worry about sanding a flat spot on it. So we're going to blend that muzzle in and then we're just going to use some uh, sandpaper here, real fine sandpaper. It's about a, a 600 grit and um, just sand the entire barrel down and hopefully uh, if we did everything right, uh, that should be minimal. And I don't think we're going to need any uh, any filler or any um, Mr. Surfacer to uh, take care of those seams. That looks pretty good. All right. So next up, uh, we're going to work on these uh, grab handles. There are three of these grab handles that goes onto the turret. And that's the reason why we haven't assembled the turret uh, back in step four yet. Uh, because we need access to the inside uh, of the turret to glue these into place. So for our grab handles, uh, there are these little bitty circles. <laughs> and this is a textured surface, uh, so it's kind of hard to see them. But uh, we are going to take and put a little divot uh, right in the center of that little bitty locating circle that's molded in uh, to the side of the turret here. And once we get our little divot in, then we can go ahead and drill those out. So I'm going to use the Tamiya handy drill here. And uh, we're going to drill those holes out uh, with the uh, 0.7 millimeter drill bit. And just be careful that you don't put your finger behind where you're drilling. You don't want to try to drill into your hand. Uh, so, of course, whenever you drill a hole in uh, polystyrene, the bit is going to pull some of that plastic up to the surface there. And I'm just going to clean that off by very, very lightly spinning an oversized drill bit right there on the uh, on the entrance of the hole and that'll clean up that little plastic burr that gets raised up around it for us. Now you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it because if you do <laughs> it's liable to bite into the plastic and we don't want it to do that. So we're going to use the same wire that we used on our upper hull uh, for the grab handles and this is that jewelry uh, wire that's used to, to make jewelry, things like earrings and what have you there. Uh, and I am sanding this finish down a little bit, uh, put a little, uh, little bit of texture onto this smooth metal. That'll help with the adhesion for uh, our CA glue and as well as paint. So we're just going to go ahead and, and sand the surface there. Now <clears throat> we have our bending jig here. and just show you, uh, I've trimmed this little piece of wood down. To where it just touches the inside edges there of the holes so that should give us the exact uh, bend that we need and then I've gone in and cut a kerf uh, or a little slot uh, that is at 90 degrees right across our uh, wooden bending jig now we're using wire cutters here to cut this wire because it is a really hard stiff wire and you don't want to use your sprue cutters for this uh, you could risk damaging that. So we're just gonna cut these longer than we need. And we're gonna use that sawed uh, little line there that's on the jig to help us hold each one of our uh, grab handles into place there. That way, every single one of them are consistent. Um, and as you can see here, I'm just gonna clamp it with another piece of wood. And then I'm gonna use a scrap piece of wood as well to get the bend. Easy peasy. So with our three grab handles uh, already bent and ready to be placed onto the turret, all we got to do is insert it into the holes that we've drilled. And since we want uh, all of our grab handles here to be uniform, uh, I have cut uh, this small piece of uh, polystyrene that is one millimeter thick and that'll make sure that they're all uniform in uh, how deeply they've been set. And we're going to use our medium CA glue here to uh, glue it just up on the inside. Now, one of my viewers uh, suggested that uh, 
uh, you can put your CA glue on a like a tea light wax candle and that'll preserve the uh, the CA glue for a longer period of time if you have a lot of gluing to do uh, but I'm just doing these three little handles so it's no big deal all right so next uh, we're gonna take a look at these vents here so these are where the evacuation fans are mounted on the inside of the turret and uh, as you can see you can see completely through them and I don't really want that kind of effect there so what I've done is I've cut a thin piece here of uh, polystyrene sheet and we're just going to uh, cover these up on the inside sort of like that shadow box area that we did for our grills uh, but as you can see it's bright white and it's really hard to paint down inside there so we're going to use this uh, Vallejo uh, black acrylic and uh, spray the uh, the little blocking piece here <laughs> not sure what to call it uh, so I'm going to use this uh, isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol and I need to clean up the edges there of that piece that we painted so that we'll have a better adhesion uh, with our glue. I kind of like the polystyrene to mate to polystyrene without glue in between, or without, uh, not glue, but um, paint, paint in between them, <laughs> if I can get my thoughts straight. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're just gonna rub that, uh, the edges down there. And once we get it situated into place here, as you can see, it's nice and dark down inside there, and that's the effect we're going for. And we're just going to go ahead and, and glue that up. Now, you don't really have to do this because it should be all dark inside there. All the hatches are going to be closed, but uh, I just want to make sure that uh, we don't have any light penetration. Next, we can go ahead and start assembling our turret which was step four, which we kind of bypassed because of our grab handles and, and that little blocking piece of uh, uh, polystyrene that we put in for the evacuator vents. So I'm just going to start on the cheeks there um, next to the gun mantlet to glue up uh, the turret halves. And as you can see, the to me extra thin will just suck right down into that um, at seam. Now this turret fits very well so we don't have to worry about anything here. Uh, we're just going to do the left and right uh, of the uh, the mat yeah the mantlet and then uh, we'll go ahead and just glue the rest of the turret uh, making sure that uh, we're lined up. So now we can go on here with step five uh, we can work on the commander's cupola here in the hatches and also we have some lifting hooks now we've already put those handles on but we got our lifting hooks and some pistol ports uh, to deal with uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take care of those right now so we do have a little viewport here I'm just gonna put a touch of glue there and this little viewport is very small. So we're just going to place it on with our finger. And then we'll use our tweezers here to get the alignment and get that straightened out. We also got our pistol port right down below it. And this is a really small piece. <laughs> it's really hard to get a hold of. Uh, if I can get a hold of it, there we go. And we're just going to set it right on our glue. Now we're going to be very careful not to squeeze too hard with our tweezers. Otherwise, that will take off and <laughs> disappear. We have another pistol port uh, on the opposite side. And we'll put that into place too. And next up is our turret lifting hooks. And it's just a little angled piece of plastic there. Uh, well, on the real thing, of course, it would be metal. But as you can see here, uh, I have left that um, sprue gate on. And that's because these parts are so small. Uh, the best thing to do is glue these into place. And we'll trim those uh, uh, sprue gates off later and, uh, and sand it uh, after the glue sets up. That way we don't have to worry about losing these 
little hooks. Next, we're gonna work on our commander's cupola here. And as you can see, it's really smooth and shiny and and they weren't like that on the real thing. They were, they were uh, cast pieces. So uh, we're gonna use our uh, stenciling brush, which we've cut half of the, uh, the bristles off uh, to make it really stiff. And we're gonna use that to do our texturing. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna start by wetting the surface here with our, to me, extra thin, which will start to dissolve the surface of that uh, plastic for us. And then we can come in with our uh, stenciling brush here and just texture that surface. And we'll go over it as many times as we want to until we get the, the texture that we want. And as you can see here, uh, you just keep going around it until you, until you get it all the way around. So it, it does have a rather rough surface uh, if you look at uh, uh, reference photos. So we're just gonna make it as rough as we can. And there you can see, that's kind of roughed up for us. I think that's gonna work out really good. And there might be some areas that might be a little bit rougher than we want, so we'll just coat that with a little bit of to me extra thin there uh, to kind of smooth that out a little bit for us. Yeah, okay, that's gonna work out. So the next thing we need to worry about is gonna be the viewports. And as you can see, there's these little flat areas uh, where those viewports go. And we're just gonna glue those on just like we did uh, the viewport that's on the side of the turret. Just a little touch of, to me, extra thin. And being very careful not to lose these because they don't give us any extra. <laughs> so, uh, and they're very, very tiny. And we're just gonna stick it into place. And we'll use our tweezers to uh, set it up where it's aligned with that little flat area where it's uh, supposed to be located and we'll glue the rest of them on the same way. So the forward section here is like a cover that the hatch attaches to. It also has the commander's periscope in it and it is tabbed so that uh, it'll only go on one way and we'll just glue that into place and then we're gonna go ahead and attach the hatch. Now we don't have any figures or anything for this particular kit. Uh, and of course you could always uh, get figures if you wanted to, but we're gonna have it with the closed hatch. And the same thing for our loader's hatch. We're going to have that in the closed position too. And we'll just position that and glue that one into place too. Now it's time to put the commander cupola in place and it is notched so it only goes one way and we'll just glue that piece in as well and I don't think this was a rotating cupola I don't really know but anyway it looks pretty good I kind of like that all right so now it's time to clean up these lifting hooks so we're going to trim off that sprue gate and we're just going to carefully uh, buff that down with a sanding stick and get rid of the, uh, the little connection point there for the uh, sprue gate and smooth those out. And the great way of doing it, or the great thing about doing it this way, we don't, we don't have to worry about the carpet monster getting these little parts. So now it's time for some perfect plastic putty. I love this stuff. However, I did uh, tape my little card down this time, so I'm not chasing it around my mat. Um, and we're gonna use our Perfect Plastic Putty, which is a water-based putty. And we're just gonna put it in around our grab handles here. And that will help simulate, uh, simulate, simulate, <laughs> simulate uh, where these handles are actually welded uh, to, our, to our turret. So we just want to place that putty uh, right around that uh, area where the handle comes out from the turret. So I let the putty dry completely before we go to the next step because I just want to use this uh, toothpick uh, as a sculpting tool 
and we're just going to wet the surface. Um, that way the plastic putty underneath is still dry and we're just going to be sculpting the surface of that uh, plastic putty and we're just going to remove whatever we don't like there. So the round uh, profile uh, of our uh, toothpick, <laughs> if I can figure it out, uh, yeah the toothpick is going to help us um, to uh, get that little curve there uh, with the putty and as you can see I'm rotating the toothpick too that really helps with the removal of the excess uh, water-based putty and we're just going to sculpt that down and this is really easy to do it just takes a little bit of time uh, you just want to make sure that you get everything the way you want it before you start applying paint <laughs> so uh, we'll sculpt all these down and as you can see here that's the that's the effect that we're that we're kind of going after so we've got the other two handles to do now once uh, we've got them all sculpted down the way we like it I'm going to tear off some little pieces of uh, paper towel here or a napkin whatever you want to use and uh, I'm going to use this kind of as a, a, a mop <laughs> because there is a little bit of residue uh, from where we've been sculpting on on the side of the turret there and we're just going to clean that up really easy uh, get that extra residue off there that way uh, we don't have anything interfering uh, with our painting uh, later on when we get there so now we're going to uh, turn our attention here to that seam where the upper part of the turret meets the lower portion uh, and that there is a seam there from the casting on the original tank However, it's just too straight. <laughs> and so we're gonna do some texturing here as well. We're gonna kinda of try to blend uh, that uh, seam so that it's not so uniform. And we're gonna use that same brush that we used before on our cupola. And this is the same method that we used before. We just put the, to me, extra thin right on the seam and we're going to use the same uh, technique here. Start stippling that out. I'm trying to blend this edge as as best I can to where it's a real rough uh, edge and it's not so uniform uh, because they <laughs> they weren't uniform at all. Uh, it was a really rough casting seam. So I think uh, it's just not really getting as rough as I would like. So of course. I'm going to use the back side here of a number 11 X-Acto blade and kind of pinch it a little bit there. And then I've also got uh, a clay modeling tool here and we're just going to push it in just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit, you know, it's just, we just want to break up that uh, real fine line. And that's kind of where we're at there. That looks pretty decent. That's not bad. So we'll just keep on going uh, right along the seam around the turret uh, until we get the look that we, we want there. So now we can finally go ahead and attach our barrel. So I'm using the thick Tamiya cement here. Uh, it allows us to kind of shift the barrel around a little bit, uh, but it really holds um, super strong. So we're not going to have to worry about knocking the barrel <laughs> off later. So it is tabbed. Uh, it is a half moon tab that fits into a half moon slot and what we want to do is make sure that we've got it center of our mantlet there and uh, also straight uh, with the turret. It needs to be in line with the turret. There's nothing worse than uh, having a crooked gun barrel. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and let that set up for us. Now we can turn our attention to these <laughs> these tow cables that are included in the kit. Now the instructions doesn't tell us what to do with them, but uh, as you can see, they're really hard to do anything with when it comes to uh, you know making them look like real tow cables. So I've decided we're going to replace the cable portion, and we're going to be using this wire. And these are the strands. I've got five strands here. Uh, 
of copper wire that I have stripped out the out of the uh, insulation and uh, this is from 18 gauge automotive wire and I think there's 10 or 12 uh, strands in there so you will have to separate uh, the five strands out of that bundle so what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, five strands here and I'm just going to clamp it in my vise. Now you could use a strong spring clamp and clamp it to your table or something else. Uh, we really need to hold that end of it uh, nice and tight because we're going to put some tension on it. And we kind of need something on the end uh, to clamp our drill to. So I'm just going to fold these ends over. Sorry I'm out of frame here. But uh, yeah, we're just going to fold it over a couple of times there. And that's kind of what it looks like. And then we're just going to take a cordless drill here and just run the chuck up around it to hold it nice and secure. And if you don't put those folds in it, uh, it will slip out because it's kind of small there and we don't want it to do that. And then we're just going to very carefully here spin uh, our wire uh, to give it that twist that we need. We want our twist to be in scale. So by doing it this way, uh, we can modulate uh, how tight and uh, how uniform our uh, cable is going to appear. And with it removed from the drill and device, here we go. That's our cable, and it looks pretty good. Now, the, the good thing about copper cable is that we can bend it and give it that more realistic look and, and shape it the way we want it uh, right on our model. Now we are going to use these ends off of our cables. So all we got to do is take our uh, flush cutting uh, sprue cutters here and we'll just cut those ends off. And while we're cutting things off, I'm going to take a pair of, uh, uh, these are small wire cutters. Uh, don't use your sprue cutters to cut wire. That, that would be bad for them. Uh, I'm just going to cut that little folded end off. And we're going to use the uh, plastic uh, wire section to get our length and I'm just gonna cut it just a little bit longer I guess um, it, it doesn't really matter uh, the length on these uh, because there's no true attachment point for them uh, they just kind of lay up on the uh, on the sides of the tank so we just want to make them equal in length so with all of our cutting done, uh, we need to dress up the ends here where the uh, cables are going to go into the uh, end pieces here. And I'm just using a sanding stick here to make sure that it's nice and flat. I need a nice flat surface there uh, because we're going to have to drill a hole in it. So what we want to do is right in the center uh, where we sanded it. Uh, we're going to put us a little divot there using our hobby knife and that'll be our starting point uh, for drilling our hole. And the next thing we need to do is to size up which bit we're going to use uh, with our cable here. We want that hole large enough that we can get the end of the cable to go into it. And that'll give much more purchase area for our cable to be glued on to the ends. And once we select our uh, drill bit. We're just going to go ahead and in that little starter uh, dimple that we put in with our hobby knife, we're going to start the bit and make sure that we're center uh, of the piece. We don't want to drill out the side of it. <laughs> that would be bad. Uh, so next I'm just going to chuck that drill bit right up into our Tamiya handy drill here and being very careful right there at our starting dimple. We're just going to drill it out just a little bit. Don't put a lot of pressure on it in case you slip off <laughs> before you get started with a good hole because you don't want to be drilling holes in your fingernail or the end of your finger. That, that would be bad. And we just want to check. And uh, remember, test fit, test fit. <laughs> and here we go. There we are. So that's going to glue up nicely. So that's what we do. A little bit of CA glue, and that glues the ends on for us. And now we can start to uh, form this copper wire uh, of our tow cables to where it lays along the side the way we want it to. And we can just put our little bends in. 
uh, wherever we want and maybe even give it a little bit of a, a wavy look too. Uh, that way uh, they look a lot more realistic. So this will, uh, this completes our uh, construction phase of our T3485. We've got our turret on and our tow cables uh, in place. Now the tow cables are not glued in place yet. Uh, we're going to leave them free uh, from the model for painting. And also these uh, external fuel cans or fuel tanks, uh, we're going to leave those. Those are not glued on either. It'll just be easier to paint. All right, that will wrap up part four in this series. Uh, special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys that uh, I keep making these videos. And uh, if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, I hope that maybe today I earned that subscription. Uh, if you like the video, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like too. Uh, next part, part five, will be painting. And you're not going to want to miss that. So don't forget to hit that notification bell. Uh, so until next time, guys, stay safe. And I'll see you in the next one.